Welcome to the very first episode of the Christian Life Podcast. Today, your hosts, Art Nuremberg and Michael Brazier, will be talking about um, the Christian life and giving some background to the school, EI, the Evangelical Institute, which is hosting this podcast, and our heart for this generation to know Jesus. So, also, as just a little bit of clarification, this is my grandfather, but um, I won't be calling him Papa in the podcast. So, we'll just put that out there for people that know us. Um, He is there. So, that is it. We'll get started. So, can you just tell us your testimony about, like, how you came to know the Lord and how you kind of came to, yeah, like, combine the two of those? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, Yeah, I kind of grew up in a typical... um, liberal church experience okay coming up i was in a liberal methodist church all my life um i had a respect for god but not um no real deep devotion we, we went to church we did the right things um but but i didn't have a lot of examples of hmm. what christianity was really about we did read the word of god at times but it was it was just casual um but I was always in church. I was part of the youth group, part of everything. But it was just really a social situation. And where did you grow up? Uh, mostly in Pennsylvania. Okay. And, and I spent my high school years in um, Orlando, Florida, Winter Park, Florida. Okay. Okay. So I was in there. And um, particularly in the time in Winter Park, I started to get kind of aware of God and what was out there. And I wanted to respect God and all the rest of it. But I was probably the classic... Um, person that Paul describes in Romans chapter one, hmm. who knew some truth, but pushed it down. Okay. Because I also was pretty much of the mind that if God took hold of my life, he was going to want to change it. Hmm. And I wasn't real interested in that. There was uh, certain features of it, maybe clean it up a little bit. I didn't want the control of God. So um, that continued through high school. Um and when I got to finish with high school, I determined to go to uh, college to, um, I was going to study chemistry, came to Furman University, was right over here. And, and part of my program in coming to Furman was to kind of get away from my mother <laughs> and church and um, be able to be my own man. I'd still be respectful, but yeah. it would be out on the side. All right. So uh, it was when I arrived at Furman University that I collided, the way I look at it, I collided with God. Hmm. I got there to escape it, and I was just crowded. Um, Mr. Johnson, Jan Johnson, who was who taught here at the school for a long time, I was already there. He was in the same year at Furman as I was, and he was there to evangelize. <laughs> and there was another guy on my call that was there to evangelize. And there were, it seemed like everybody I met wanted to be in this group. I did a little work in that, that uh, among our freshman class, and particularly among guys in the freshman class, and they had a Bible study, and they had a prayer meeting, and they were dragging me into <laughs> this. And um, then along the way, um, one of the guys who was my roommates, or not roommates, uh, but friends, uh, was Randy Loper, who would become a missionary to Nepal. Hmm. And he started bringing me to hear Mr. Carroll, who was the founder of the school, uh, teaching here in Greenville. And um, I began to take in these thoughts concerning what, what was Christianity really about? You know, hmm. the Christianity I had known was kind of superficial out to the side. And uh, so I began to listen. Went, and it took me three years to come to the Lord. Right? Okay. Because I kind of understood the idea that you received a gift by grace. But for me, it, the problem wasn't that I wasn't willing to receive the gift. It was that I wasn't really ready to entrust myself to the person. Hmm. See, it's, it's, it is receiving a gift. That's Christianity. But in another sense, it's coming to a person. Jesus saves us. Yeah. And you entrust yourself to him as a person. Yeah. And if you're entrusting himself to him as a person, then he's going to do what he wants to do. Yeah. And it was that part that scared me. It hmm. was that that kept me hard. I was willing to kind of go along to it. But that meant loss of control, and I wasn't so sure I was. Wanted yeah, to be saved that much. Right. <laughs> the control part was. Yeah. So my three years of listening were basically this, that um, I need to find out how I can avoid hell. Okay. At the lowest possible price. <laughs> and that was, that was 
I thought it, I, I was ready to follow as far as I needed to follow, but I didn't want to go one step further than I needed to go. Yeah. And the next three years was the process of God by his word convincing me of who I really was hmm. and my terrible need to be saved, which I didn't really have at the beginning and how little I had to offer God. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And to understand because it was just a complete change of thinking now from the liberal Christianity I'd been growing up with where I was somebody and I could serve God and I could be something for him. Yeah. But now it was, I was nothing. And, uh, and finally when I was a senior, it was in the spring of my senior year, um, came to the conclusion it was time. Hmm. God, it was in a little revival meeting it was, uh, Jerry White was there and in those revival meetings, um, I really came to the Lord, hmm. right? Now that that got me started on things. Um, but right from the start, I think I knew that before I was converted somehow, yeah. that if I actually gave myself to the Lord, then I was going to end up in service. Hmm. Which, and that was part of the control. Yeah, that was, I didn't want to be. In yeah. <laughs> I did not want to be a missionary. I did not want to be a preacher. I yeah. pre- particularly didn't want to get in front of people. I'm yeah. very shy. Did not want to be, and I, I, yeah, I was just, I didn't mind being in a church, but service was not it. Well, I knew right away that that was what that was not going to be an option hmm. that I was going to have to go into. That God was calling me in. And you've been here for fifty five yeah, years, fifty five, fifty well, two years, seventy two. A long so, time ago. <laughs> yeah, this was a long time back. So, um, Mr. Carroll was getting ready to start the school. And I was had friends in this group of guys that was a really wholehearted group. A number of them were going to seminary. And I was thinking seriously about seminary. But at that particular point, you see, it was the spring of my senior year that yeah. I came to know the Lord. So you'd done, you, you're a chemist, essentially. Yeah, I had done my chemistry, and that's where I was headed as far as the um, scholastic side of it went. So... Um, in the 1970s, in seminaries, um, it could have a different mentality than they have today. In those days, they assumed you had a spiritual life and then trained you to teach other people, okay. to, to minister to people. But your spiritual life, uh, you had to have first. Hmm. Um, and I was thinking about going to seminary, but I knew I wasn't really ready. I didn't understand the spiritual life. I didn't yeah. have one. I mean, I just come to the Lord. I'm going like, if they're going to assume that I understand what it means to walk with God, to love him, to serve him, to pray, I didn't know anything. Yeah. And uh, it was that time Mr. Carroll started the the school here at EI. And um, I decided I would go. It was going to be a one-year school. So Hmm. I decided I would go there. And the purpose was to get my feet on the ground in the spiritual life so that I then could go to seminary and and, then get into ministry when I would have things done. Um, so I came for a year. Um, truth was that um, at the end of a year, I think he thought that, you know, we need two years. <laughs> so we had uh, we had convinced him that maybe one year wasn't enough. <laughs> so I came for another se- a second year. And it was at that point that uh, I, it's why I'm here now is that I began to compare my experience mm-hmm. at EI with the experience of the guys who I knew that went to seminary. Hmm. And although I'm not demeaning what they um, got there, but what we do here, what must, what took place in my life here, yeah. is something I would like to be involved in because it was more discipleship, straight out discipleship. Mm. It was coming, it was getting down the business of of understanding um, the life of faith and and what it meant to really go through this. And so um, I stayed on. We were building buildings at the time, so and I'd been in construction a little bit before, and so. I stayed, again, sort of as a, a beginning to my ministry. Yeah. I never intended to stay for 50 years. 50 years. <laughs> I did. But, a lot of but years. But that's how I got here was it was because I just didn't know God. I had committed yeah. myself to him. But I really didn't know him. But I didn't know how to live by faith. I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to anything. Yeah. And so my uh, my goal was to do that. So. so what is your role here now? I know you've had a lot of roles, but... <laughs> What do you do now? Okay, well, um, I'm one of the instructors here. Um, 
that's primary role. I've, yeah. I've been in different ones at different times. Um, when we were first here, my role was to Mr. Carroll, who founded the place. Let's put it this way: was a world class speaker. Okay, he'd been all over the world. He knew people in the big circles. Yeah, of Christianity. Um, had preached beside the great men of our era. Yeah. All right. So he was world class. Um, he was the main attraction to the school. My okay. job at the very beginning was just to fill in the gaps behind him. Okay. So I taught <laughs> Old Testament survey and, and just to support what he was teaching. Okay. To make sure that uh, people understood it. And I was young and helped them to grasp what he was saying. Yeah. Um, eventually, um, there came a point at which he had to retire from the ministry and I became director of the work, but that wasn't my calling yeah. <laughs> right now. Um, so I, other people were put into place to be the director. I have become, I go back to the, the job. I, I consider myself basically a spiritual coach. Yeah. To just help people understand how to live. So now that, so people have like some background, but what is like the heart behind the school, like EI? When we say EI, we mean the Evangelical Institute because we shorten everything. So, okay, okay. yeah. Well, there's different ways you could put that, but eternal life, what is it? It's to know God. Mm -hmm. right? It's to know God and Jesus Christ, whom he sent. Yeah. Um, in our day, it's real possible to have a great deal of knowledge about what the Bible says. Americans have real, <laughs> we have so many Bible studies. We have so many um, activities to learn, so many books. The English language has more spiritual um, books, yeah, good, solid books than the whole rest of the world, all the other languages combined. Yeah. So we, we know in a sense that, but... We live in a very fast world. It's, it's mm -hmm. fast paced. It's coming at you all the time. It, and the heart behind it is to give people a chance to slow down for a couple of years to make sure that they've really got their feet on the ground with mm -hmm. walking with God. Who is the Lord? And what does it mean to really walk with him? Yeah. To actually know Jesus Christ as a person. What does that mean? Yeah. Uh, so that they can get a solid foundation so that when they go out to whatever they go to, whether it's into a secular job or whether it's into a missions or a ministry or anything else, that they are grounded in the faith. So that's, mm -hmm. that's my big heart for the things at this particular time. Hmm. Yeah. So this podcast, its goal is to kind of like share about EI, okay. but also it's like, I don't know, we really want it to be a means by which to reach people online with the reality of who Jesus is. Right. So that was kind of a big thing when we were talking about it. And that's one of the big things why you're here okay. <laughs> much to your dismay, I think, but you're here. And because you've been here for 52 years at EI, you've walked with the Lord for a long time for over 50, yeah. Yeah. 55 years, probably close to it. And um, so we want to tackle the issues of, cultural issues, but also the practical issues of walking with the Lord. What does it mean to live a life of faith? And what does it mean to live a life right. of prayer? And and then also because like we are coming from it, not from different perspectives, but we're we're 50 years apart in age. Right. Yeah. So that's a, it just, it adds to it. So that's kind of the goal behind the podcast. So when we're looking at forward at this generation and like the goal of reaching people, obviously, on social media, because a lot of the people on social media are younger. They're millennials or Gen yeah, Z, my right, age, yeah. or like 13-year-olds, which I don't even know what generation that is. But what, when you pray for young people, because I've heard you pray for young people, okay. what are you praying for? Okay. Well, let's start with this one. Um, I think this is the, of all the times in history, mm -hmm. To live in the church, this is the most exciting. Okay. The Great Commission is to take the gospel to the entire world. Hmm. In our generation, in your generation, yeah, you have all the tools to make that a reality for the first time in church history. Hmm. The, the, the internet situation makes it possible 
for the whole world to be involved mm. in anything. You yeah. can go anywhere, no matter how um, backward, how poverty stricken a nation is, people still have a phone. Yeah. <laughs> they, they can get on that. And that means that the communication of the gospel can be done. Yeah. And it's possible in this generation to fulfill the Great Commission, to take the world, mm. or the gospel to the whole world. So as I'm praying, um, that's my great concern, is yeah. that it can be done now. The problem then it becomes, do the, does the church understand the tools it has spiritually at its disposal mm-hmm. to get that done? To get that done, okay. So that it doesn't become simply a business proposition with no heart, but it is a, it's the carrying out of that purpose from a heart that really knows God. Mm-hmm. And that is my, my great concern, because although the opportunity is great, the challenges are also great. They're yeah. very great. And I yeah. think they're going to get greater, but that's, I don't know. I'm, I'm finishing up my tour of duty, yeah. and I'm turning it over to others. So what will that be? Um, and the, the concern that I have is that, is that the young people get hold of who God really is. Mm. You know that from, we uh, had a prayer um, program just a few years ago. We were praying for young people particularly. And it yeah. comes from Daniel chapter, again, my concern, again, I don't know, it's a little out of context, but let's think about for just a moment, to, um, Daniel chapter 11, I think it's verse 32. I'm not great with verses, but anyway, it's in yeah. there. And he says this, he's, he's talking about a, a situation in Israel's history where men are coming in and they're trying to destroy Judaism. Mm-hmm. And Daniel says that two things are going to take place. Two different responses are going to happen there. There are going to be those that just give in to it. Mm-hmm. They just, they give up. All right. He says, but there's those who are going to stand against. He says, and those who know their God, but those who know their God will be strong and act. They'll know what to do, mm-hmm. and they'll have the strength to do it. The difference between the two groups is they they all believed the same thing, mm-hmm. but some knew their God, and some it was all formal. Yeah, that's my burden for for the young people of this day is mm-hmm. that there will be those who really know their God, who will then be able to look at the circumstances that we're living in today and take hold of them. Yeah, and and, and actually enter into all that. Yeah, so. That's the way I'm praying, and yeah. that's why I do what I do here. Yeah, because um, I want to give people a chance to to actually get to know that. Now, my great concern is this: the other inputs that are coming in our day. Now, there's mm-hmm. nothing different about the sinfulness of our day. Yeah, sin is just sin is sin, <laughs> and and it's always been sinful. So we always had to overcome that. There's no difference in that. But the difference between those days and today is that the amount of input that goes into the minds of a person Mm -hmm. is just incredible. Yeah. And that input can crowd out God, even Mm -hmm. though they want to serve God. Yeah. And um, we've talked about it before, but I I heard many years ago a, a man speaking. He said that if you read the Wall Street Journal... From pay from front page mm-hmm. to the back page, that you would take in more information than the average person in 1900 took in in their entire life. Wow, it's a lot of information. <laughs> it's a lot of information, and, and so that when you have that day after day coming at, you, it's crowding your brain. Mm-hmm. And so my great concern is that that there that God would raise up people who have quieten their soul enough to actually hear his voice and mm. get to know him. Mm. So that, that's my big concern for this day is that the noise factor, um, that they get past that somehow. Yeah. And that's what I'm mm. attempting to do. So do you think that the Lord is doing that, doing that work in young people? I think he is. Yeah. I think he is. And I think, and this is, and I spoke to you many times, I think about it, but I'm actually enjoying teaching Mm -hmm. young people more than I ever have for this reason. The culture is pushing us out. Mm. 
so that people who come to the school here really want to know God. Yeah. Where they didn't always want to know him in the past. Yeah. It was sort of a, maybe this was, it was interesting. Yeah. But there's no value to coming to a school like we have here, except yeah. to know God, which means that uh, I have a cleaner slate to work with. It's, yeah. It's, People who are actually hungry for right. they, they getting to know the Lord. For it. Hmm. And so, um, so I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I think God is doing a work. Yeah. I think he's clarifying the vision for, for people. Now, that's where my prayer goes, is that he will do that in a broader way. Hmm. Right? Um, yeah. It's one thing to do it with a person here and a person there, but I'm praying that God would send a revival, if you would, a, a strong work of the Spirit of God, which would call out individuals to do yeah. that in, in groups, because... Uh, Today demands it. Hmm. So, what is the biggest, or more, like, yeah, I guess the most formidable obstacle that you see this generation facing, like young people, my generation? Okay. What would be back what we're just saying? Okay. I think it is you think the it volume is of information. Information, okay. Um, which is very confusing information because th- there is a cultural change that I've seen during my lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, when I went to college, science was just about everything. Mm-hmm. Right? Better things for better living through chemistry. Yeah. Right? This was a, and it was all a very scientific and logical world. Mm-hmm. Um, the world that we're living in now has deserted that kind of a position. Mm-hmm. Um, vocabulary has become very mushy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard for people to talk to each other. Yeah. Because... Well, it's easy to talk over a screen. So. Right, yeah. yeah. yeah it's <laughs> That's easy. easy. Yeah. so you can say anything over a yeah, screen. you can say anything on the screen. and um, But the vocabulary doesn't mean what it used to mean. Yeah. So that um, <clears throat> that makes it tough to to speak directly to people because you can't, language doesn't doesn't make the same difference. Yeah. And so that's that's a big part that kids have to overcome. Yeah. So that, again, just without getting into an issue on it, um, marriage meant something when I was growing up. Marriage doesn't mean that it's it's a mushy sort of thing. Yeah. As a person married, yeah. Right, so that we don't have husbands and wives anymore. We have partners. Yeah. And in that, there is a failure. There is a a mixing up of things that. Okay. Now, that's not my problem to sort all that out. But the same thing can happen in spiritual realms. Yeah. And this is a big part of my burden. Um, and it's part of the reason I came to the school. I grew up in a world in which there was a lot of vo- Christian vocabulary, mm-hmm. but it didn't translate into practical living. So that it's, it's told people a lot of times, one of those moments of spirituality in my pre, in my high school years was a day which my sister and I we heard that you you need to be justified by faith. Then the question, or saved by faith, we wouldn't have said justified. We said saved by faith. And we sat there, and we tried to define that word, and we couldn't define it. <laughs> okay. We couldn't figure out. Yeah. Here it was. We have to have a ticket to get to heaven, but we don't know what a ticket is. Yeah. We couldn't define the ticket. A lot of my burden in this day is that we think about God has communicated truth very clearly, is that we then take time to hear clearly what he's saying and understand that so that um, we'll be able to live by it. Yeah. <clears throat> so next week, we're actually going to talk about faith. Okay. I think that's on the agenda. Okay. So um, to tease it, can you define faith now? Or what is faith now? Yeah. And um, it is interesting to note. Yeah. The Bible doesn't give us a definition of faith. Okay. It gives us pictures. Okay. It gives us a lot of pictures. Um, and... You finally come down. It's, it's a little complex to, mm-hmm. to work at, but it's finally, it's trust in a person. Mm-hmm. It's as, like Hanley Moles' um, definition, which basically goes this way. This is an exact quote, but it basically goes this way, that it's personal trust in the person of Christ worked out in a real life. Not in an artificial place, but worked out in daily living. Mm-hmm. Personal trust. In him, entrusting myself to a person and deriving all from a person in the practical parts of life. So um, that's kind of where you go. 
with big but business. There's a lot more to be said about yeah. how it works. And we'll talk there. about that next week. So thank you for our very first podcast. Okay. I'm excited about it. Um, we'll be back next Tuesday. 